What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to speed up Python tasks using multiprocessing and Joplip. So let us get right into it. Alright, so in this video today we're going to use Joplip to speed up Python tasks by running them in parallel using pipelines instead of running them sequentially one after the other. This is what Joplip allows us to do. And for that, we're going to open up a command line of our choice and we're going to install Joplip. You can see it doesn't have any dependencies, so just the module itself. And then we can say from Joplip import parallel and delete. Those are the two things that we're going to use. In addition to that, we're going to import math and we're going to import time math just so that we have something that takes some time to do. Uh, just some complex operation and time to measure the execution time. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to say results equals and then we're going to have uh, a list comprehension math dot factorial of x for x in range 8000. So pretty trivial example, we're just taking the factorial of large numbers. Um, and this will take around four or five seconds, something like that. We're going to measure the execution time here by saying T1 is time time before that T2 is time time after that. And then we're going to just say T2 minus T1 to get the execution time. So as I said, this should take around four or five seconds. There you go. 4.47 seconds. This is without job lib. This is without parallel execution. Of course, you can increase those numbers to 10,000. Be aware that this obviously by definition grows uh, factorial uh, in a factorial runtime complexity. So it's not a linear increase in time. It's a factorial increase in time. Uh, but still, you can see here 7.77 uh, seconds is the execution time here. So let's go ahead and make this parallel using Joplip. Let's comment that out and do the same thing here using Joplip. So what can we do here? We can say results equals and then we use the parallel keyword here or a class. Um, and we specify here the number of jobs. The number of jobs is basically the number of cores that we're going to use. In my case, I have an eight core CPU, so I can use eight cores. I can say n jobs. Uh, equals and I can use two cores, I can use three cores, everything up to eight. Eight is the fastest. And if you don't know how many cores you have, first of all, you can find out. But second of all, you can also just specify negative one to say as much as possible. So if you say n jobs equals negative one, this will take as many cores as possible uh, for the task. But in this case, I'm going to start with two cores just to see that uh, this decreases the runtime. And then what we do is we call this so we say okay um, after after having this we do more parentheses and in here we specify now the delayed function we say delayed and here we pass the function in this case we're going to just say math dot factorial uh, we're not going to call the function we're passing the function here as an entity so we're passing the function to delayed and then we call this delayed thing uh, to pass the parameter in this case um, x for x in range 10,000. So remember, this was seven seconds without job lip. And now when I run this here, uh, you will see that this has only 4.3 seconds. So we saw a speed up already by just using two cores. If I now use eight cores, you're going to see that this is way faster 1.8 seconds. Uh, and if I specify in negative one, it should have the same runtime because that should be eight cores 1.6. Okay. Uh, so you can see a massive speed up here. We had seven. Now we have 1.6. This is a massive speed up just by using multiple cores. And how do we do that? We specify parallel here. We specify the number of cores we want to use. Uh, we delay the function. We pass the function here to the delayed function. Then we call it on the value. So we do the same thing as here in the list comprehension. So that is a pretty trivial example. This is just uh, something that doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's look at an example that actually makes sense, that actually can be useful. Uh, and for that, we're going to need a couple more libraries. So we're going to open up CMD again, we're going to type pip install, and you will have to install pandas. Pandas is essentially for working with data frames, you should know it uh, by now if you're a subscriber of this channel. And then we're also going to use color thief, I have used color thief, I think in two videos, uh, where I talked about extracting colors from images, this is what we're going to do here as an example. So you want to install color thief as well. And uh, then we're going to just uh, import here pandas as PD, we're going to import 
color thief. Uh, we're actually going to say from color thief import color thief. Um, and then we're going to also import two more core Python modules. First of all, OS and second of all, uh, UUID. So this is just for generating unique IDs. Um, and then I'm going to get rid of the math module because we don't need it anymore. And the idea is now the following. I have a data set here, dress.csv. I got it from Kaggle, whatever you can uh, make your own data, data set, use your own data set. You can look up some links online. The only idea here is that we have uh, image URLs. So URLs that refer to images. And what we need to do here in order to extract the color from those images is we have to download them, we have to process them and so on and so forth. And the problem with that is, of course, that um, it takes some time to do that sequentially. You download, you process, you download, you process and so on. Uh, whereas if you do that in parallel, you can speed that up massively. So let's go ahead and just do it in a very simple way. We're going to say here, first of all, data equals PD read CSV. And we're going to load the dress.csv file. Again, this is just some Kaggle data. You can use whatever data that contains image URLs uh, you want. And uh, then we're going to define the function extract image colors. And we're going to take as a parameter the URL of the image. And we're going to say now unique ID equals UUID UUID4. Now, the reason we generate a unique ID is because usually if you just do this sequentially, you would say download as temporary.jpg or something. The problem is if you have eight cores working on the same thing, they should not have the same name. So of course, you could also just have a number for each core. But with a unique ID, you're basically guaranteed that you're not going to have uh, any conflicts here. So you say unique ID is UUID UUID4. And then we're going to say with open F string here, this unique ID dot JPEG in writing bytes mode as F. We're going to say now F dot write. And we're going to say, oh, by the way, I forgot one module, we need to also imp uh, not import pip install requests because request is what we're going to use to uh, send the request to download the image. So import requests, f write requests dot uh, get URL dot content. So this downloads the image and writes it into a file. And then what we do is we say color thief equals color thief and we're going to target the unique id.jpg file again. This is just an example. The focus is still on joplip. So if you don't understand everything we're doing here, it is not the focus of this video of this tutorial. Um, but I have a video on the color extraction as well, if you're interested in the details here. So then we basically say we want to extract the palette um, or the palette, how is it pronounced uh, of the image and we want to say color thief dot get palette of this file. So unique ID dot JPEG. And then we want to remove the file as well. So again, unique ID dot JPEG, remove the file so that we don't have a bunch of random files in a directory here. And then we're going to say return the two dominant colors, which have the indices zeros, uh, zero and one. So that's the basic idea of extracting the colors. Now let's get to the interesting part where we do this with joplip. So what we have to do without joplip is uh, joplip is we say colors is an empty list, for example, and then we say t1 equals time time to time this again, t2 equals time time. And in between what we do is we say for URL in and then we can say the data that we loaded image URL and we're now going to take the values and only uh, the first 100 so that we don't have to process all the images because this will take a lot of time even with joplip. Um, but we're going to say now colors dot append whatever we get as a result from extract image colors uh, URL. And of course, you can do this also as a list comprehension. But I did it uh, like this now. And let's go ahead and see if this works. First of all, uh, what's the problem here? Colors append extract image colors URL doesn't work because we don't get Oh, I think Yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot. In the get palette function, we need to say color 
account equals two and not provide the file name again. There you go. So now it will take some time to download the images to process them. You can also see that we're generating some files here that we're processing something. I think if we open this in the Explorer, we should even see more. Yeah, you can see all these images being downloaded and processed here uh, and deleted all the time. I think one is not deleted for whatever reason. Maybe there was an error or something. But this takes some time now to process 100 images and you can see that it would be good for us if we could speed that up using multiprocessing. If we could have eight cores working on the same thing instead of just uh, one core working sequentially on this, it would be nice to have this done in Joplip. So while this is running here, let's already start writing the code. Uh, we're going to say here, um, oh, by the way, this is this is a problem anyways, because we didn't print the code. So let's run this again. It's already done now. But uh, let's run this again and see what the time actually is. And meanwhile, we're going to do the same thing here now with Joplip. So we're going to say t1 equals time time. And then t2 equals time time. And now we're going to do the same thing with Joplip. We're going to say colors two is going to be equal to parallel. Again, n jobs is going to be uh, put to the max number. So we're going to say negative one. We're going to delay the function that we just wrote. So extract image colors. We don't call it. We pass it. We call it afterwards. We call the delay function uh, on the URL for URL in data image URL dot values and then a hundred. So now I'm out of the screen here. There you go. That's the code. And you can see this one took 45 seconds to just load 100 images and to extract the colors. We're not going to look at the result. It's basically just some colors. Uh, that's not the focus here. Let's go now ahead and do this. So let's try this with parallel. And of course, we're going to comment this out because we don't want to go through the same thing again. But if I now run this here with eight cores with the maximum amount of cores available, it will not happen in one second, but it will happen in five seconds, 5.4 seconds. Uh, and I think we can also notice how this happens. So if we open this again in the Explorer and I run this, we should be able to see how these images are created at the same time. Now, maybe we're even working with 16 cores here. I'm not actually quite sure because my CPU has eight cores, but I think it has 16 virtual cores. I'm not sure how this works, but Essentially, when you provide negative one, you get the maximum output possible, the maximum amount of cores possible. Um, and other than that, you can also specify manually. So if I provide two here instead of one, uh, I think this will take around 20, 22 seconds. We don't want to test this here. But yeah, this is how you speed up your processes, your tasks using Joplib in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.